Welcome back to Computer Networks, and now we're going to have a look at an example simple client uh, program that uses the Socket API to connect to some kind of server uh, somewhere. So, hop down here. Now, this is written in C because C is actually probably the most common language uh, that network services are written in, particularly if you're implementing networks and things. Uh, but don't worry if you're not too familiar with C. Um, I'll go through line by line and explain how it works so that you can get an understanding of how this works. Uh, and that would be our hope that you understand how this program works and the key pieces of it, um, even if uh, you're not able to write such a program. Um, if you're doing this course as part of a computer science uh, major, then it's quite likely that uh, you will be assessed on writing such things. Uh, but again, that will be uh, between you and the um, uh, the topic coordinator. Uh, for those of you who are doing the course with me at Flinders University, uh, then you'll have the choice uh, as to whether you do a programming oriented piece of assessment or whether we focus on more of the theoretical side of things. Uh, and that would depend on whether you're doing the Masters of IT, uh, for example, or a Bachelor of IT or the Computer Science courses on the other hand. Anyway, uh, enough preliminaries. Let's dive in and have a look. So for those of you who are not familiar with C, so we'll start here at the top, we've got these five hash include lines and they tell the C preprocessor uh, that we want to uh, bring in um, certain files that define uh, various functions that we can call and things that we can use. So std IO uh, is standard IO. This lets us print things to the screen easily. So for example, down here, we've got an F printf to std error, so the standard error output and we can write something and it will appear. So that comes from stud.io. Uh, then we have sys types and sys socket and net inet slash in um, and net db. These four together give us the ability to access networks. Uh, then we've got here two hash defines. So these are local to this program. So we're saying that the TCP port we want to connect to on the server is 5432. And we're saying the maximum line length that we want to use is 256 characters. Uh, then we have a function declaration for the main function. So in C, normally every program has to have a main function. And this is the, pro the function that gets called when the program starts. Uh, so it returns a type int, so that's an integer. It's called main, it has these two arguments, argc and argv, which is the way that the command line arguments get passed in. Don't worry too much about the detail of that at the moment. We're then defining a variable called fp, which is a pointer to a file so that we can read or write from a file. Uh, we then have a struct host ent um, that we use to uh, actually have a look in a moment how that's being used, but um, it will be used along with socketer in, uh, which we created a variable called sin. This will actually have the address uh, that we need to connect to. Then we have uh, a pointer to a char, so that means a string in C, uh, for a thing called host, which will be the host name. And then we have the buffer of length max line that we defined up here, uh, that we use for holding a, a line of input. And then we've got two integers, so two number variables, um, s and len, um, that we use to keep track of the string. And then we check if the number of arguments, so arg key C is the count of arguments, is two, then the host is equal to the first argument. So what we're saying here is that we're expecting the program to be given the name of the host to connect to. If we aren't given one else inside the brackets, then we do we print an error message out saying the usage of this program is simplex talk. So that's what the name of the program would be compiled and the host to connect to. And after it prints that, it will do exit one, which basically means the program will finish with an error code to the caller. So that's the first page of our program here. Okay, on the second page, uh, we need to get the uh, the IP address of the host name. So we call get host by name on the host name. So this in behind the scenes, we'll do a DNS lookup and put the result into that host ent that was defined earlier uh, and declared as HP. So this one here um, and put the result in there. If we can't resolve it, so if HP points to a null, is a null um, value, then it failed. And so we will print out an error message saying, look, we, that host was unknown. 
um, and again it will exit with an error code. If on the other hand it did uh, resolve to an IP address then we can start building the uh, address structure. So this is a little bit fiddly um, but at the end of the day it's basically boilerplate. So we zero out the um, SIN variable, uh, we set the address family to uh, INET and then we copy the host address from the uh, the host ent structure into our address structure and we copy the correct number of bytes to have the length set so this is assuming that get host by name will have returned an ipv4 address if we we're making something which could work with ipv6 as well we'd have to do a little bit more work uh, but we're keeping things simple here for the moment so then we try to create a socket and we want uh, for it to be an inet socket and we want it to be a, uh, a stream socket so it will be a TCP over IPv4 socket default protocol so if so this is a funny if test structure if you're not familiar with C so this is doing the assignment of S equals that and then it's immediately doing an if on that S as well so what we're, we're basically saying is if S is less than zero that's an invalid response from socket then we will uh, call p error which prints out an error message um, based on whatever the thing that went wrong is so we don't even have to know what the error is we can actually just have this uh, the library will print it for us uh, and yeah basically say where this happened in our program and then exit with an error message if on the other hand it didn't fail then we try and connect it so if connecting returns less than zero again an error condition then we'll print the error condition but at this point the socket is open so the socket was sorry the socket exists we created the socket up here with the socket call if that fails we don't have to clean it up because it was never created however when we try and connect if the connection fails the socket still exists so we're being nice and we are calling close here so that we actually close the socket uh, when we're done and then what we do is we go into a while loop so for as long as we can keep getting a string from stood in, so this is just the user typing in at the console uh, for the program uh, once it's running, then we'll get a line of input and we will try and send that um, to the server it's talking to. We don't try and read anything back. This is pure simplex, so it's one direction. Duplex is both directions. Simplex is one direction. So this will just keep trying to send uh, lines of text to uh, some other program and we will have a look in the next video at creating the kind of program that could accept connections from this program and print those text messages out. Um, so we'll see you then in the next video for that and as usual um, ask questions in the comments below and we'll try and respond to those for you. Thank you.